This is video number two for sections 4.1 and 4.2, Rules of Exponents. In order to get anywhere with exponents and exponential functions, you have to be skilled at using these rules. There are five famous rules of exponents, and in this video I want to write them down for you, as well as give you some sense of where the rules come from. We'll take them one at a time. I have filled in uh, on the handout the left side of the rule and we'll go ahead and fill out the right side together. Rule number one concerns the situation where you would like to multiply two items with the same base. Well take a look over here I did a sample problem uh, of that situation so x to the third times x squared same base well, let's see, x to the third just means x times x times x, and x squared, two x's, x times x. If you put it all together, you realize you just have one, two, three, four, five x's being multiplied, which is x to the fifth. Now, we're just looking to see if there's a faster way. Take a look at what we have at the start. Take a look at what we have at the finish. Let's see if we can develop a rule. We need to understand two things. We need to understand what happened to the base, and we need to understand what happened to the exponents. The base is pretty obvious. I mean, I started out with x's, I ended with an x. So apparently the base just stays exactly the same. How about the powers? Well, I had a 3 and a 2. I ended up with a 5. It's not too difficult to see that what must be going on is that the two powers here got added. 3 plus 2 is 5. Going back over to the rule area then, what we're saying is if you want to multiply two guys with the same base, the base stays exactly the same. If it was b before, it'll be b now. What about the power? Well, there will be a new power and the way you find it is by adding together the two previous powers. That's rule one of exponents. When you multiply two guys with the same base, keep the base the same and add the powers. Let's move on to rule number two. This is a very similar situation. It's just that now instead of multiplying, we're dividing the two items. That's what the fraction bar indicates. So this is b to the m divided by b to the n. Well, again, over in the sample area, uh, I made up a simple problem, x to the fifth over x squared. In order to work it out the long way, x to the fifth just means 5x is multiplied. x squared means 2x is multiplied. And remember, when you have a fraction consisting of a bunch of stuff multiplied, you can divide out any common factors that you may see. So I see this x here that can divide out this x on the bottom and I see this x here that can divide out this x on the bottom leaving me technically with a bunch of uh, ones in these places well I'm out of stuff to divide out on the bottom in fact the only thing left on the bottom is a bunch of ones which means I'm not even gonna have a fraction as an answer the only stuff I have left is x times x times x which is x to the third for a final answer that was the long way. Let's see if we can figure out the rule. Here's what we started with. Here's what we ended with. So what's going on? Well, again, we need to address both the base as well as the exponent. I started with a base on the top and a base on the bottom. Where did that same base end up? Well, it ended up on the top. Remember, because the bottom turned out to just be a 1 under there. So the base ends up on the top. And what about the powers? I had a 5 up top, I had a 2 on the bottom, I ended with a 3. Hopefully you can see it's just a simple subtraction. 5 take away 2 is 3. Now the order matters with subtraction. It's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So when I go over here to my rule area, what we're saying is if you want to divide two items with the same base, the base ends up on top and the new exponent is found by subtracting the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. That's rule two of exponents. If you want to divide two guys with the same base, the base ends up on top and the powers get subtracted top minus bottom. Okay, let's go on to rule number three. Rule number three concerns the situation where 
your base itself consists of a multiplication problem, b times c, and then that base is being raised to a power. And we want to know if there's some quick way to work this out. Well, in the example area, I made up the problem x times y all raised to the third power. This is not difficult to work out the long way. Remember, the base tells you what to multiply, and the power tells you how many. So this just means multiply three xy's together, xy times xy times xy. But remember, really, in between each x and y, there's also a multiply. And so essentially what you have here is just six items being multiplied, three x's and three y's. And it doesn't matter in multiplication what order you do that in. So if I rearrange it, I get xxx, which makes x cubed, times yyy, which is y cubed, for a final answer of x cubed, y cubed. Take a look at the start. Take a look at the finish. We're just trying to figure out if there's a quick way that I could come to this answer. Hopefully what you see as you look closely here is that the exponent that used to apply to the entire multiplication problem has simply been distributed to each piece so that now the x has the third power and the y has the third power. That's essentially rule three. If you have a multiplication problem being raised to a power, you can distribute that power to each piece of the multiplication problem for a final result of b to the m times c to the m. One thing probably worth noting here, remember that rule 3 only applies if you have a times in here, b times c. There is no nice rule of exponents for b plus c raised to a power. In fact, that's so complicated it doesn't come until later in the course. Okay, moving on to rule four. This one is similar to rule three, except now instead of multiplication inside my base, I have a division problem. I have b divided by c, all raised to the m power. Well, this is a very similar result to rule three. You can see the example problem over here, x over y to the fourth. That just means multiply four x over y's together. So I did that. How do you multiply fractions? It's very easy. You just multiply straight across. x, 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 x makes x to the fourth. y, 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 y makes y to the fourth. Again, if you look at the start and you look at the finish, you can see here uh, it's just the same principle as before. That 4 that used to be on the outside of the whole thing ends up distributed to each piece on the inside. And so my rule over here is if you have a division problem raised to a power, you can distribute the power to the top and you can distribute the power to the bottom. Again, remember rules 3 and 4 only apply to the cases of multiplication and division. They do not apply to addition or subtraction of bases. Okay, one last one, rule number 5. Uh, this is the situation where I have a base and a power, and then that whole thing is being raised to another power. So it's a base and two powers. Take a look at the sample problem over here x cubed raised to the second power. Well, let's focus on this power. Uh, squaring something just means take your base and multiply it by itself, multiply it two times. So I take my x cubed and I multiply by another x cubed. Well, once I write this down, I'm now in a situation that matches rule one because I'm multiplying two items together that have the same base. So if I use rule one, the base stays the same namely x, and the new power is the sum of the previous two powers. 3 plus 3 is 6 for a final answer of x to the sixth. We've been looking for faster ways to do this. So if I start here and I end here, how could I go there directly? Well, it's the same idea. I need to figure out what happened to the base. I need to figure out where the new power came from. Well, once again, you can see that the final base matches the original base. And as far as the powers go, I started with a 3 and a 2. I ended with a 6. Clearly, it's just a simple multiplication this time. And so going over to the rule area, we're saying here, if you have a base with two powers, 
the base is going to stay the same and the new exponent is going to be found by multiplying the previous two exponents together. b to the m to the n is the same as b to the m times n. I will tell you that the rules people tend to mix up the most are rule 1 and rule 5. Rule 1 you add the exponents rule 5 you multiply the exponents. This is why you really need to work with these rules a lot so that you know when each rule applies. You need to memorize these rules uh, and know them forward and backward. I would suggest you even make yourself some flashcards. You could put the left side of the rule on one side of the card and the right side of the rule on the other side of the card. Just spend a couple minutes every day practicing the rules until you know them very very well. And one last reminder, if you glance through here at the left side of all the rules, you will notice the only operations that you see are multiply and divide. There are no nice rules of exponents when you start adding and subtracting bases. So keep that in mind. Don't make up your own fake rules. Uh, later on in this lesson, we will practice using these rules to simplify some expressions.